Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am Adrian Michael Soto, and this is the AMS Podcast. So, what is this podcast going to be about? It's going to be about films. I'm a fan of films and discussing about the past, present, and future of films. You could call me a different, a fan of a film fanatic, as I just love discussing just a variety of topics related to film in general. And overall, everybody that knows me or I know I've never met before loves some form of film, whether that be a genre, director, etc. So the reason for creating this was because of friends and family, <clears throat> excuse me, suggesting to give this a try. They never told me what I should do specifically, but they said I should try I should try something out of a podcast. So I am going to give this a shot. It doesn't hurt to try at all. And as you're hearing my voice, it's basically going to be the way it is. This is how my actual voice is. And basically, that's how I do talk in person. So, thank you for listening. Here's, enjoy this first episode. And what this first episode's topic is going to be is, why do, we lo- why do we watch movies? Why do we like watching movies and films? And overall, it can be on genre, an actor, an actress, a director, franchise films, and just so many different reasons. And and going back to the beginning, genre can be action, sci-fi, comedy, family, horror, suspense, thrillers, etc. I can name you a list of different actors from A to Z age range, their race, ethnicity, that will be, hey, I like that movie. It has so-and-so actor or so-and-so actress. I want to go check it out. And for my film fanatics out there, you're going to go see it because it's the latest movie by Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, Guillermo del Toro. Um, any, any, uh, any actor, you love their films and you love what they do, or maybe it's a first time actor and the story intrigues you. And whether that be a franchise films, hence the comic book genre, um, films like the Fast and Furious movies that have made 10 already, films that are based on books, video games, or you don't like any of that and you want to see something that's an original idea, and it being something completely different, uh, biopics, films based on true stories. And for me, as I'm going to reference a lot as a film fanatic, at the end of the film, there's the credits that you may know or realize that there is thousands and thousands of people that also help create your favorite films. And it, the job listing can also go from A to Z. And it's so many different roles that you may not have noticed or you may have noticed that go from the sets to the lighting to the makeup to the costumes. Everybody has a job to create just overall an experience for you once you sit in that theater and you enjoy yourself on whatever it is that you're about to see. And for me as a young kid, I enjoy just... I don't know where it came from. I enjoyed learning about behind the scenes of movies at a young age. I enjoyed going to places like Universal Studios and just knowing that what you saw on screen, there was even so much more behind the camera and so many other people that helped create your favorite films from the past till right now and possibly later on down the line in the future and since I studied a it's kind of like a film degree but more of a media production I've gone to appreciate every single detail and what it takes to make like movies and everything the film fan in me just loves the entire landscape of movies someone can just be entertained for two hours and say they enjoyed the film and that's totally fine you're allowed to do that. And I would just kind of say movies can be compared to like music. 
there is another vast variety of different jo- um, different musics, uh, music genres, rock, hip hop, country, and it goes the same thing like movies, all the different decades that goes from A to Z, a different artist. I will enjoy everything, and I enjoy a little of things of what you hear currently today. So um, it's me in general, what I compare those two is, and what polymusical artists do, is you respect what came before in the past, and artists, like in film and music, create something of their own, but honoring what it was done before to create something of their own, but paying homage, you could say, honoring what was before, or because without them, there wouldn't be such and such musical artist or director, actor, cinematographer, and things like that. And that can be seen in some sort, sort of way. And the reason why I bring up the past is if you were to Google a name by the name of the Lumiere brothers they would be the ones, the listing would say that they would be the ones that created the motion picture images back in the 1800s. And they basically just did everyday life of people doing everyday things, exiting a train, family eating together, people exiting a factory. And you could even call it like a home movie. But This was a form of entertainment for people back in those times and literally would go to a theater and pay, I don't have an exact number, but 10 cents to go watch just people doing this. And hence, so many years later, we have vastly changed on the movie experience of what we uh, tend to see of what movies are and everything else. So you're interested Uh, One day, just say, hey, he mentioned the Lumiere brothers, see their work, and that's what was original of movies back then, and just how much things have changed. And uh, things have changed in movies, the cameras, the costumes, the sets, CGI, special effects, makeups, makeup, stunts, and just... A comparison is completely different to what I just briefly mentioned going off of sets. You could say that I referenced Universal Studios. You go to actual sets and it could be the forming of a house that looks like a house. You walk in and all it is is just the outside, the exterior. Then if you start going into specifics, people will build the inside of a home the inside of a castle, um, the landscape of a sci-fi place in a science fiction world, a fantasy world of knights and dragons, cowboys and Indians and westerns, a mafia, CGI special effects. You could even say just how things look different from Transformers movies to looking at something back of the very first Terminator or Alien makeup. I originally just saw the monster movies, uh, Universal's uh, Universal Picture monster movies, and the makeup of that back in those days is uncomparable to what you see now in horror movies and thrillers and just suspense movies of makeup in such detail. And a lot of, you could say a lot of those artists gain the inspiration for things that was done back then. Because if you don't have that, then you really can't go off of, not a copyright per se, but more or less just the inspiration and the idea of creating new characters and themes and just overall storytelling. And just so much is different. And to some... I might be not really getting you intrigued here, but to my film fanatics out there, you might see something like this in those behind-the-scenes special effects of what it takes to create these sorts of movies and everything, and just the detail and everything of what is done to set up a movie that 
takes about a year to two years to make. But for us, we walk into a movie theater and we watch it within an, uh, two hours and that's it. Because so much is done and sometimes we didn't... I didn't realize it at first, but later on down the line, till this very moment, I've go, I've grown an appreciation for just the craft of the art of filmmaking and kind of just going off of this first topic episode and briefly discussing why do we watch movies we want to we want to escape into a different world for a few hours kind of be a part of these characters worlds no matter what the genre is we sometimes relate to the character of the story whether that story being the uh, environment relatable to the city, excuse me, the culture, the decade, the time and what it was in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, how we might assume how the future might be 100 years from now, like if it's Blade Runner uh, 2049, or what we thought back then when we saw Back to the Future Part 2, or any sort of futuristic style movies, we want to just be entranced and just like, wow, I I I like this place. I want to be a part of this place. And the film fans, um, in us also want to just see the little details of what's done. Even I didn't bring it up, but even just the script writing of how. Each actor just brings a character to life and learning how to do that in a college course is very hard. And to my writers out there, if you feel like you're a writer and this is a line of work you want to do, by all means, I commend those who do it. It's not an easy task because as you can see, there is so many different films. And before even a film gets started, they have to create the script with actor 20 actors 10 actors no matter who's on the the thing of a film and then they learn their lines and they have to portray that character in a certain way and either we are going to enjoy it or we're going to feel like uh that's too boring it's flat i didn't enjoy it at all and basically just making sure that once that's in a good spot then everything else comes into play And all the steps until it gets finalized and we're sitting down in our seat with a beverage and snack of some kind in a movie theater and ready to watch whatever it is that you enjoy watching. And also I feel that movies can inspire us in some form or fashion, whether that be a sports movie, um, an inspirational movie, sports movies like Rocky, inspirational movies where... The main character gets knocked down figuratively, not literally, but knocked down, saying he can't do this. Excuse me. He can't do this. He's too weak. He's He's not capable of the things he wants to do. But he shows everybody in the story or in the film, just watch me. I'm gonna keep trying and never give up. And even going into specifics, we some of us love the films that have the love stories, falling in love or dealing with a breakup, our particular genre of the family films, something relatable that we've experienced or we know somebody has experienced personally. We enjoy, the, um, I know a friend, he, if once I mention this, mafia films, action films, western, animated films, All those have their different specifics that I could go into a later day and explain to you what each is about, like if I'm teaching a college course. But each of them has their own different formats and a way of storytelling, and that has either intrigued us for such a long time or not really, and you're just a casual moviegoer like, oh yeah, I'll watch any of those. And and you enjoy yourself, and that's the main part. is is It's an entertainment that we get to enjoy, and it leaves a lasting memory for us. That you like, I love that movie from ten years ago, five years ago, thirty years ago, whatever how many and long it's been since it was last released. And we just love we just love movies and the art of it in general. And for me. 
I'll go in the little specifics for myself in no particular order. My favorite genres are sci-fi, action, comedies, family films, and fantasy films. And, and that'll be another day as well where I can tell you specific ones for the reasons why. You may have something completely different from me and that's totally fine. You're what well, you are you don't have to follow whatever I say. It's such a wide range and just everything that we can all we're a fan of this is a fandom. I see movies as a fandom and we're all fans of something and we're fans of all these different genres and which just makes it fun. And we don't have to like every film, as I said. It's not your cup of tea. That's totally fine. And sometimes we get lost in the story. The acting was terrible. The film was just too long and you got bored. That's that's understandable. I hear that all the time. The movie was just a big mess overall. They crammed stuff in. And it's just realizing, it's just like, no, nah, I hated that movie. Well, it was too boring or I didn't get it. I didn't get all the hype was about, and that's totally fine. That's why you can have a discussion with somebody and be like, yeah, all right, it's not for you, it's not for you. And as I mentioned, my favorite genre movies, I can bring up a list of so many, and as you're hearing this right now, you might not agree on those genre movies. You might you might hate those, and not, um, I, I can't blame you for that. I'm not going to hate you for not liking what I like. Everybody likes something. And just movies and just movies overall is it's just a wide range that is just so different and just so entertaining and stuff. And overall I see that movies and films have been a place of pop culture. And the reason why I say pop culture, they're cherished in some form or fashion. I'm going to reference movies of the past. Back to the Future, Jaws, Star Wars, Rocky. Um, even the universe, as I mentioned earlier, or if the Universal Monster movies. They all have some form of apparel and clothing, bedding, uh, t-shirts, shoes, when all those movies came out, stuff was created and stuff is still created today because we enjoyed, we, um, pe those that watched it before I did enjoyed it. I would love to watch those movies now. And we bought all those things. Action figures have come out of different movies. We quote the movies. I'll be back. Do you feel lucky, punk? Say hello to my little friend. I am your father. Just so many different things. And just a... Just a vast... It, it, the list goes on and on. And even as a thing like Halloween, we sometimes love to dress up as our favorite movie characters. And that might be your favorite hero... From a superhero movie, an action movie, comedy, even the horror movies. And I know a vast majority of horror movie fans. And they like to dress up as Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason. Even some of the old classic monster movies. And that's what these movies has, have, less, have left a um, lasting impact on us. And we show the next generation and the next generation of what was before. And to some, they might be like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. And to others, they'll be like, no, nah, not for me. I'll watch the newer stuff. And like I said, that's fine. This is not that you have to be forced to like something. You just, you like what you like. And as fans, as I said, movies is a fandom. And I'll, I'll say this, I am, a, as the times we're living in now, I grew up watching the Saturday morning cartoons back in the 90s, and a lot of those Saturday morning cartoons involved superhero movies. And as if you would have told my younger self that you would be watching 
so many different variety of superhero movies, I would have told you you were insane. But I've enjoyed the fandom and the experience of all these different superhero movies. I won't go into the specifics. So I'll save that for another day. But just the experience and just the thrill ride of having you sit down there and realize like, wow, this is, for me, this is epic. And to somebody else, it may not be. And once again, that's completely okay. For others, they'll be that casual movie fan. And yeah, it was enjoyable. It was fun. And different things like that. And how do we feel about movies? We all feel them in different ways. They make us laugh. They make us cry. They get us in suspense. They have us on the edge of our seats, biting our nails, making sure that the main character gets out alive and the, the, the villains don't win. Or sometimes maybe you want the villains to win, depending on how the story is told. We... We just kind of enjoy that movie for the longest time and it had some sort of impact on us. We all experience our daily lives in many different ways. And then once we, <coughs> excuse me, once we go into, um, once we go into experience that film, it's going to just have us enthralled and just excited and either we just enjoyed ourselves and it was just so much fun and we want to just watch that movie nine ten more times down the line and and uh there's a i've met a lot of people where they're like oh i had to watch i only saw the movie once and that's all i liked about them that's fine i enjoy movies and i'll end up quoting them or i love and i've seen probably a hundred times I would have to go back and create a list of how many movies I've seen more than 10 times. But it's it's just an overall thrilling experience and you want to enjoy it and make sure that I feel sometimes that it's an adrenaline, adrenaline rush. Even though you're sitting down, you just feel like you were taken on this ride and it was just thrilling and thralling. Of just making sure that you enjoyed, just you enjoyed being a part of what you just witnessed, no matter what the genre was, and I just want to end this on talking about movies. Is we enjoy movies and we continue to enjoy them in many different ways, no matter what the genre is. We all love something. We're not gonna love it more than others, and that's totally fine. You'll have a conversation with them, but by no means you're going to force somebody to love what you love and they're not going to force to love what you love. I didn't mention in some of my favorite genres, I'll enjoy, I'll watch horror movies. Maybe my younger self, I'll admit it. I would say I'd watch it during the day. <laughs> I, I was, I, 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 ain't, I ain't afraid to admit this. I, I'd, I'd say I'd, I was a chicken watching horror movies but now I'll, I'll watch them um i they're just not one of my top tier genres to enjoy watching and you enjoy whatever it is that you enjoy watching you love what you love and that's what these movies are it's something we love something to get away and if i the brief discussion of what I may have talked here and treated you about the art of filmmaking a little bit. Go on YouTube and do a comparison of your favorite movie genre and see how a movie was done, a horror movie was done to your favorite movie horror today or your favorite action movie today and compare it to an action movie back in the 60s and 70s. So much has changed then to where what you see nowadays is compare is so much different to what was done back then. And it's it's just insane. And I've gotten my family to kind of see the appreciation for what is done to do the making the behind the scenes of a film. And they kind of not 
literally stay for the credits of the movie, but I've shown them the more of the art of making movies and things like that. And now they'll acknowledge and they're just surprised and shocked that so many different people and there's probably of all ages, all race and ethnicity that help create your favorite movie, whether it be sci-fi, fantasy, horror, action, uh, animated, just all, all, of, all the genres of movies from the past, present. And including this year, we're going to have a list of a, a bunch of different movies that that are going to be coming out. And it's going to be just, once again, so many people help create the movies you love. And you're going to enjoy yourself. And it's going to be one of those of what I've just talked about today. And making sure that you enjoyed yourself. Or once you get out, you're going to be like, once again... I didn't like it. It was too boring. And that's fine. There's going to be more movies for you to enjoy. And to those that do enjoy those movies, they will. And whatever is the next movie you watch, have from watching it from start to finish. And you're the one to decide whether you liked it or not. And if you didn't, that's okay. We got to look forward to what's coming up next in the future. So many movies will continue to get made. And that's whether you watch it the first time on your tablet, your laptop, your TV at home, or on the silver screen. For me, you can catch me at the Cineplex buying popcorn and soda. I gotta have my popcorn. I, I It's my kryptonite. I love popcorn. And even you can relive your many favorite movies of the past. And enjoy those guilty movie pleasures, which I'll name right here on this first episode. And anybody that knows me very well, Nacho Libre, fantastic guilty movie pleasure. It's not obviously a critically acclaimed, but it's 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 one of the best. Don't at me. <laughs> so yeah, and just movie watching movies and the art of movies and films is just an interesting thing to learn about. And before I end today's episode today, thank you so much for listening. I have other ideas and topics and formatting on creating more future episodes for the show. Like and share it with others. If you've already seen my projects on this channel, thank you so much. And share with anybody that you know that you know would like to see some of these little mini projects. And I want to thank Storyblocks for providing the music and video clips for this first episode. And that's it. I would say first one is a learning experience. I had fun talking about something I love. I have a passion for. And I'm Adrian Michael Soto. This is the AMS podcast discussing all films, past, present, and future. I'll see you when I see you. Have a good one. Goodbye for now.